And often when I talk to people about the digital collection, they think about it in terms of the last 10 years or so, but actually our collections uh, date much back earlier. And so the first exhibition of computer-generated art were simultaneously in 1965, both in New York at the Howard Wise Gallery and Stuttgart. So my first slide, I just wanted to kind of really emphasise some of the early digital works. We've got a piece by um, A. Michael Knoll from 1964, which was in the Howard Wise show, and another piece by uh, Frieda Narker. Um, but the museum really started um, collecting uh, prior to this exhibition, uh, or seminar exhibition, Cybernetic Serendipity at the ICA in 1968. Early records show that the curators in the late 60s were really had concerns about collecting uh, this type of material, which was then seen as a new material. And those considerations concerned uh, digital preservation, which is something that still uh, is a uh, consideration for curators today, whether it be works on paper, whether it be born digital. Mm -hmm. uh, the primary larger donations came in about 2007-08 uh, through the Computer Arts Society and Patrick Prince, who is an American art historian. Um, this is just an installation shot from Digital Pioneers. I don't know if anybody had an opportunity to see it, but it kind of traced the history of early digital works, and it was on at the same time as Decode, which was Design Sensations Now. That was in 2009-10. Our collection is principally works on paper. Um, so again, it goes against the grain of what most people think of when it comes to digital. So we've got, um, actually this is mis mislabeled, it's 1952, but it's a... Uh, oscilloscope photograph of electronic rays uh, being manipulated um, and screen prints and also obviously much larger than life we've got a uh, punch card down here at the bottom so just again to emphasise that we're interested in technique and process. And we also collect uh, contemporary artworks. So these are two examples uh, by Random International. The one on the right was a prototype that was in Decode, and then the artists uh, worked with our conservation team, and the latter work was acquired. Uh, and the other piece is in the ceramics garden, both of which are interactive. And this piece in 2010 was the museum's first digital artwork on permanent display. But it's not just through the collection that the museum engages with uh, new technologies and creative um, or media creative artists. So I've just put up two slides uh, as examples from our artists in residence. The one on the left is by Christian Kerrigan, who was the first digital designer in residence. And following his residency, this work was acquired Bloodlines. And more recently, um, Sophia, uh, Sophia George was the games artist mm -hmm. in residence. So following her residencies, we had games, jams, um, and in my work in a digital, like educational capacity, we also organise the digital design weekend. I also organise uh, workshops and courses. We do lots of work with digital, uh, with families. So these are two installations, one digital dragon, which used uh, connect box and projectors. And then we also commission like apps. So this one was dive and design, which used augmented reality to engage uh, young families with the collection. In addition to collecting, we also run Digital Futures, um, mm -hmm. which is for a showcase for students to show their work. So this is from Goldsmith and St. Martins. Um, and the drop-in digital drop-in session which um, is invited artists to come and do show and tell effectively. I really wanted to emphasise that the museum has been collecting digital art for a very long time, um, although obviously the focus in recent years, what digital means and how it's collected has changed.